Hey, welcome back. Today we are going to be working on tall grass. Let's start off by creating a new node. Control A to add a new node, and we'll create a node 2D. Let's rename this to be grass. And I'll save this as its own scene. Save branch as scene. And actually, instead of grass, I'm going to call it tall grass to be more specific. Save branch. Great. Now let's open it up in the editor. Now let's add a sprite to our tall grass. And let's browse for our images for our grass. So I have one called tall grass right here. And I'm going to drag that into the texture field. And there's two frames for it. One is the idle grass and one is the stepped grass frame. So under animation, let's change H frames to be two. And under offset, let's tick off centered. So it's within the tile. Now I'm going to add an area 2D so I can add a collision shape to our grass. And I'll create a new rectangle shape 2D. And then I'll center this by setting the position to be 8x8. Eight eight. And I'll click on shape again. And then I can modify the extents. And I'll make this 7x7. Seven seven. So I'm making it a little bit smaller than the tiles. So there isn't any accidental overlap between the player and the grass. Now let's add an animation player to our tall grass. Control A. And then I'm going to create a new animation. And I'll call it idle. And all I have to do here is just animate the frame property. And I'll just key in one frame. And that'll be all for this animation. And then I'll create another animation called stepped. And the length of this animation will be just 0 0.2 seconds. And then let me zoom in. And then I'll key in the first frame. So the second frame, actually which is the step frame. And then I'll key back the zeroth frame. So it gets stepped for 0 0.2 seconds and it goes back to its normal frame. Now let's add a script to our tall grass. Let's create a script. And then let's go to the area 2D node. And then on the node tab, we can connect a signal to our script. And what we want to connect is body entered. So whenever our player enters the grass, we want to do some logic. So double click on body entered and then click connect. And we can play an animation. So we can play the stepped animation. So let's get access to our animation player on ready var. And I'll call it anim player. And then dollar sign and animation player. And we can get access to the anim player. And then within this function, we can call play and we'll put in the stepped string and that'll call that animation. All right, great. So let's go back to our town scene. Click on 2D. And we have this tall grass. I'm going to move it out. I'll just move it right here. And I'm going to create another node just to group all of our grasses. So I'll call this grasses. And I'll put this behind the Y sort node, which includes our player. So the grass will be rendered first. And I'll put the tall grass underneath that. And now let's click play. And let's see what we have so far. So now we have a simple animation where the grass is stepped on and it goes back to its normal position. Great. Let's close out of this. Now we want to make it so that there is a grass overlay on the player. So it looks like the player is actually in the grass and not just floating on top of it. First, I'm going to go to our player script. And I'm going to add two signals to our player script. The first signal is when the player is starting to move. So player moving signal. And also another signal when the player has stopped moving player stop signal. So I'm going to use both these signals to figure out when I should add the grass overlay and when I should delete it. And before we leave the player script, we have to figure out when we should emit these signals. And we can do that in the move function. 
So in the if case right here, when we stop moving, we can call the stop moving signal, emit signal, and it's player stopped signal. So that's one of our signals down. And we emit the other signal when we first start to move. So we can actually put in an if case right here, if percent move to next tile is equal to zero, then we can emit the started to move signal. Player moving signal. Okay, that should be good. Now let's go back to our tall grass script and First, let's get access to the texture of our grass overlay, what's going to be rendered on top of our player. And I can do that by doing const and then grass overlay texture. And I can do preload. So I keep it in memory. And let me find the image. So it's stepped tall grass. And I'll drag it in there. And I'll create another variable and I'll call this grass overlay. And this type will be texture rect. So I'm gonna use this node to store this texture and have this instance in the scene. And I'll start off by having it null. Now let's go to our ready function and connect these signals. So first we need to get access to our player node. So we can do get underscore tree and then current scene. And then we wanna find our player node. So find node, and we can pass in the string player. And then once we have that, we want to connect the signal. So dot connect. And what's the signal name? So it was player moving signal. And we want to connect it to this tall grass script. So we can just say self. And then now we need to list the function we want to connect to. And I'll call it player exiting grass. So we have to implement this function. And I'll create another connection, player stopped signal. And then I'll connect it to player entered grass or player in grass. And I'm going to add a flag. So variable called player inside. And I'll initialize it to be false. So this is of type Boolean. And it's just a flag to say if the player is inside the grass or not. And whenever the player enters, we'll set player inside to be true. And let's go ahead and implement these two functions. Funk player exiting grass. So whenever the player is exiting the grass, we'll set the player inside like to be false. And the next function is player in grass. Now, when the player is in the grass, we want to create the grass overlay. So we only do that if the player is inside. So we can use make use of the flag that we just created. Player inside is equal to true. And now we want to create the grass overlay. So we have the variable grass overlay. And we want to create a new texture rect. So texture rect dot new. And then we want to set its texture property as well. So grass overlay dot texture to grass overlay texture. So we're giving in the image that we want to use. And we define that up here. And we also want to set the position of this new node that we just created. Grass overlay dot rect position is equal to vector two, and then we can do position dot x and then position dot y. And actually a simpler way would be just to do position. Now that we have the node created, we have to add it to our scene. So we'll have to get the current scene. So get tree dot current scene and then add child. And we can pass in the grass overlay. Great, so now we created the grass overlay, but we have to make sure to delete this overlay when we exit the grass. So we can go back to our player exiting grass function. And first we wanna to check to make sure that there is a valid grass overlay node. So is instance valid? And we'll pass in grass overlay. So if it's true, if it does exist, then we just call 
queue-free function on Grass Overlay, which deletes it. And that should work. So let's click play. Then I'm going to walk on the grass. And yeah, so now there is some grass rendered on top of the player. And it gives the appearance that our player is inside the grass. Great. Let's close this. Now, the last thing that I want to add is the particle effect, where there's small leaves that appear to occur whenever we step on the grass. So let's create a new node. Let's click on other node and let's find animated sprite because it's just going to be a simple animation and it'll die afterwards. And I'll call this grass step effect. Let's click on it and then go to the inspector tab. And let's click on frames, new sprite frames. And then let's click on it again. And at the bottom, let's find the add frames from a sprite sheet button. And let's browse for the grass step animation right here. Let's open that. And there's four frames. So we'll set horizontal to be four and vertical to be one. Select clear all frames and add these four frames. Now I'm going to set the speed to 10 FPS. I found that looked OK. And also, if you notice, it's not in a tile, so we have to take off centered. And let's save the scene. And let's add a script to our scene, grassstepeffect.gd, create. And in the ready function, we can set the frame to be 0 to make sure it starts from the the starting and also playing to be true. And let's click on grass step effect again and go to node. And we want to delete this effect once it's done playing. So animation underscore finished is the signal to use. So let's double click on that and connect it. And once the animation is finished, we'll do Q underscore free and it'll delete itself. Now we want to call this uh, animation sprite. So Let's go back to our tall grass script and let's get access to the scene that we just created. So const, and then we'll call it grass step effect. Then we'll preload the scene. And let's find that in our file browser, grass step effect, and we'll drag it in. And since it's a class, I'm actually going to name it grass step effect like this. I think it's better convention to do that. And now let's go to our player in grass. Now we want to generate this step effect once here. So let's create a new variable, grass step effect. And let's instance the scene, grass step effect dot instance. And we have to set the position of this effect, position equal position. And then now we have to add it to the scene. So get tree dot current scene, add child, and we can do grass step effect. And it will kill itself or delete itself once it's done playing. So we don't have to worry about that. And that should be fine. So let's click play. Cool. So now we see some particles whenever we step on the grass. Let's close out of this and let's add some grass to our map. So town and then 2D. I'm going to drag this here and control D to duplicate. Control D to duplicate, duplicate. I'm going to play one last time. And it looks good. And that's all. I hope you found this video helpful. And thanks for watching. Take care.